Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. A couple of weeks ago, I had recorded a rant about LLMs and programming and what I thought about it. And I'm back for part two because I ran across another article that talks about it and I want to give some of my thoughts about it. Now, the article is really well written and there are things that I agree with and things that I disagree with. So let's get into it. Let's see if I can keep this short. The article is titled, Why Copilot is Making Programmers Worse at Programming. And right at the top of the article, the author acknowledges that there's a trade-off here. These tools are really helping programmers increase their productivity. But as he says over here, there's a trade-off because he's concerned that they may have unintended consequences on the quality and skill set of programmers. Now, how and why could that happen? Let's read on. The first argument he makes against using AI for programming is that it can erode core programming skills. Because if you have the AI write code for you and you don't think through the problem yourself and understand the problem yourself, you're gradually gonna lose that skill. You're gonna gradually lose the ability to use critical thinking and deep reasoning. And there's some truth to it, but if you look at history, there has been a long series of such arguments going all the way back to Socrates. Socrates did not like the idea of writing because he thought that if we don't hold these ideas in our heads and repeat them via speaking them out loud, we would forget those ideas and not understand them as well. So he did not like this idea of externalizing your thoughts by writing them. Now, I don't find this particular argument very compelling because it depends on what you mean by core programming skills. Would you have said that programming without an IDE is a core programming skill, that you should not have to rely on all the conveniences of an IDE? You could go lower and lower down the ladder of abstraction. Would you have said that assembly language is a core programming skill? And I don't think anyone misses programming in assembly today. So I think this is a matter of abstraction. Even if you have a new tool that is now writing the code for you, all that it means is that there's a layer of abstraction on top of it. Just like compilers compile your high-level language code down to assembly and machine code. This next argument is really interesting. Over-reliance on auto-generated code. And I think there is a lot to this point. I like to make the parallel with how pilots, airline pilots, use autopilot. And there has been a ton of literature about how automation dependency, because of airline pilots using autopilot, has caused their flying skills to atrophy over time. So there's a fine line to walk here because You definitely want to get the benefits of all these new tools. They allow you to do more faster. They allow you to build faster. Just like overall, Autopilot really had a drastic influence on improving the safety of air travel. But it does come with this problem. It comes with this problem of automation dependency and pilots forgetting the fundamentals of how to fly. So this is somewhat related to the previous point, and I'm not sure what a good solution to this is, other than simply, as some have put it, disengaging the autopilot from time to time. So programming without AI from time to time, just to see if you can still do it, just to keep your skills sharp. All right, moving along. The next point is about lack of ownership and responsibility. So what the author is saying is that if you as an individual developer don't stand behind the code you write, it might lead to sloppy or buggy code because after all, AI-generated code could have bugs or could just be flat out incorrect. This is definitely true now. I think it'll be less and less true as time goes on. It also depends a lot on your domain. If your domain is well-trodden, like building a web app backed by a database, my guess is that the error rate of LLM-generated code in that kind of well-understood domain is rapidly going to get to zero. 
in other domains that are not as well trodden, the human programmer will still have a big role to play. But the other point I want to make here is that in at least an industrial setting, if there are bugs, you should look more at the overall process rather than at individual programmers. This goes back to the idea of blameless postmortems, which started at Google SRE. And the main tenet is that when a system breaks, when there is an outage or a bug, do not blame the individual teams or individual programmers. Instead, look at the root causes and the process that enabled such a bug to pass through undetected. And the same thing could happen with programmers that aren't using these tools either. So at least on this point, I think it goes back more to the process than to the individual programmers. All right, next point, reduced learning opportunities. Now, this is actually the one point in this piece that I disagree with the most strongly. I feel like it's exactly the opposite, that LLMs lead to way more learning opportunities than before, and they democratize the learning of programming more than anything else I've seen in two decades of programming. Why is that? Because you can use the LLM to learn programming. You can use the LLM as a tutor to help teach you programming. If you are a programmer, you can use the LLM to explain code to you, to review code for you, to suggest alternatives to code that you might have written. And if you just use the LLM as this co-pilot during the act of programming, you can learn a lot, especially if you're new to a language and you don't know all the idiomatic ways of expressing common things in that language. So I think this one point is exactly the opposite in that AI and LLMs drastically increase learning opportunities. All right, next point, narrowed creative thinking. Programming is as much about creativity as it is about logic, says the author. So for this one, I actually talked about this specific point about creativity and programming and AI in my previous rant, so I'll just leave a link to that in the description. There are some interesting arguments both ways, so go take a look at that video. On to the next one, dependency on proprietary tools. So there's definitely something to this right now, but the dependency on proprietary tools is rapidly decreasing because of all the open source models, things like Llama and Phi and Gemma and so on. And right now they're not up to the level of the proprietary models like GPT-4 or or Gemini or Claude, but the gap between the open models and the proprietary models is rapidly shrinking. And I think very soon the open models will be good enough, if not just as good. So this point is gradually going away. And his last point, false sense of expertise. A developer might feel proficient in programming because they quickly generate working code with the help of Copilot, even if they don't fully understand the code. I think this is mitigated a lot if the developer has the right attitude. If the developer just uses Copilot generated code without understanding it at all, yes, they can do that. They won't learn much. It's similar to a high school or college student using an LLM to write an entire essay and just turning it in. But if instead a developer uses the LLM to actually explore the problem, explore the solution, have a dialogue with the LLM about alternatives, about understanding the code, I think that might actually help them, like a couple of points ago, it might actually help them learn more and understand more and actually develop more expertise. All right, so to wrap up, I think the author makes some good points. He's looked at this problem from a lot of different angles. And this debate is still, this debate is still going on. I myself have a bias towards being a heavy adopter of these tools. I think you should embrace them if you're a programmer. There's no going back. 
these tools will only get better over time. They'll only be adopted more and more over time. So if you as a programmer want to stay relevant, you have to realize the risks and shortcomings of these tools, but not ignore them. You have to embrace them and learn them to the best of your ability. Just like a couple of decades ago when IDEs were new things, you had to learn how to wield your IDE in order to be a productive modern programmer. All right, I think that's it for tonight. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing, like the video, and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.